Okay, today's showcase is a little bit of Traptide. And when I say Traptide, I mean full on trap only Riptide, right? And I wanna see if we can actually get this working. I think I have a solid idea around it. And as you can see, my my equipment is a bit jank for what you'd normally run on Riptide, especially the whole new weapon. I really wish they had a one-handed weapon. God, it makes so many interesting builds a lot more viable. But yeah, so we have reel in, cash in, some draw like usual. Braces of belief, that's a bit of a weird one, right? Because again, we're not running attacks. So what do we want this for? Well, a little bit of scaling. So we can use braces of belief. We can see that our next guy's a trap, which makes me want to play reel in more than cash in, because cash in, we want to try and draw into our draw engines. Whereas reel in, we want to try and maximize and get at most the four traps, right? Uh, one pitch away if it's blue for four cards is just fantastic. So what we can do is use deep blue. We'll get rid of tar pit trap because blood rots gets us uh, a ponder token anyway. So we'll get rid of that. It goes to the bottom of the deck instead of the pitch zone because it's deep blue, which is also fantastic. Because again, I'm really just trying to draw through my deck and it's, yeah, half your deck is not a, it's not actually a hard feat across blitz, right? You can get an easy, like a 20 card draw streak going. But right now we can do real in for three, right? So we get, Four chances for four traps. We don't put anything in our arsenal just yet. The arsenal will come into play once we get three of a kind, the other really great draw engine in Ranger. Look at that, perfect. Four traps. So that puts our hand to six. Interesting. Don't need to put anything in the arsenal again. Wait, what? What just happened? Was that meant to be the select page? I think that was meant to be the, the trap select page, right? Because this is the opt, right? It shows me the traps. Yeah, then we go okay. Now we can pick. Anyway, then we don't want anything to be asked. Okay, I did. I missed the, the flags. It's a little bit confusing. First guy at it. All right, but we have six cards in hand. Why don't we just go ahead and make that seven? So we can use the gold from Crown of Dominion. And so far, our traps are looking juicy, right? We can pretty much shut down anything our opponent does with that. A little bit more draw. So we can Mage Master into the Tome, play Codex and the Three of Kind, but we probably want the healing. So we'll play the Blood Rot first. It's free, so that's fine. We can then put Tome of Ferendale into our Arsenal. We can then use Mage Master to have it have go again. We will pitch away the Blue Trap. We always want to pitch Blue, right? Stack the resources as high as possible, float as many for our other draw engines. We can then play Tome. We get a bit of healing, right? We can play another Codex, which is good. But Codex is also nice because it allows us to put something into the arsenal. So I think Three of a Kind is the better play here in case we get another draw engine, right? Because once we play Three of a Kind, we can only play cards from the arsenal. So we play Three of a Kind. Reptide's effect, we might as well put the Codex in there. It doesn't matter, right? It has a put in the arsenal effect. So any way I don't want to do that? No, because I need, I need it in the arsenal for Three of a Kind, right? So Codex goes there. We draw three more. We get three more traps. We can then Codex again. And the last thing we could do if we didn't have a trap is uh, use the ornate tensor. But what we're looking for is traps that have to be played from the arsenal. Not that it really matters, because again, we can play any of the normal traps, then play one that requires the arsenal, put it into the arsenal with Riptide's ability, and then play the trap anyway. But we'll do a, a pitfall trap. Okay, and then we get the two ponder. So our opening hand, right? Again, this is turn one. I've done nothing for the opponent to really react on aside from generating blood rot and putting something into their arsenal. So potentially they get one card, sure. But then they have to have the, the deal for damage. And we have got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We have nine traps in hand to shut down our opponent's turn, next turn, whatever we want, right? Now, obviously I'm not playing with Hall because I wanted to just get the, the draw really going. But yeah, this is the, the general gist is we draw a bunch, we trap a bunch, and we just play completely reactively and defensively. There's actually some fun interactions I'll, I'll showcase as well, right? In terms of extending the draw. So, right, we do have to worry about the actual triggers for traps. So for instance, uh, defense attacking hero that's played or activate a reactions chain, right? So unless we get that trigger, it's just a block three, it doesn't actually burn. And the big thing we really want to do is burn, right? We want the deal one damage to try and whittle down our opponent. So it's, it's definitely strategic, right? Thinking about which traps you can actually play and which traps you can't. For instance, we can play Pitfall, that's fine. Do the two unless they pay, especially since we have the, the Blood Rot Pox Tax, basically. And then we think about another trap, right? One that's not from the Arsenal. So for instance, I don't know, like Boulder, Buzzsaw, 
then we put pitfall in again, we play pitfall, then we play something else from hand, we put rock slide in, right? And just try to really maximize our trappage. So start with pitfall, doesn't trigger riptide's effect, that's fine, but should deal one, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh right, it auto can't pays. Okay, and then we can do, I guess, buzzsaw, riptide's effect. So we can put pitfall back into our arsenal, that allows us to play the next pitfall. Let them commence, and then we can play collapsing, right? No, it depends with go again. We're looking for blanket effects, right? Well, actually, we didn't get the buzzsaw proc, did we? Yeah, because they're, these are all not blanket effects. So again, with a normal matchup, you'd have to wait and see what your opponent does, and then use the correct trap scoringly. You're not going to take much damage, right? Again, if we have nine traps in hand, that is 27 damage we can negate, barring the effects as well, plus the shutdown of the blood rot box and the damage from the pitfall traps, right? It all adds up. And then we just wait till our hand's empty, let them burn through their deck, and then we start trapping again. And I think it's a pretty solid combo. I've worked it out. The max hand you can get to, God, I don't have it open actually, should be around 13 cards, right? So you would have pitched four and a bit away, four, and four blues, one yellow, right? You would have drawn 20 cards and you would end up with positive eight cards, including the cards you've spent, right? So for instance, you play cash in, so you lose one card from hand, but then you draw two back. So yeah, that, that seems pretty strong, being able to have 12 cards in hand to defend with, 12 to 13. And there are some other tricks, right, that could possibly make that more. We'll swap over to February and we'll, we'll go through the deck and we might just try out some of the, the niche effects as well. Okay, so I don't know in comparison to Frost, but obviously this is very fatigue, very controlly type of deck, so it, it could get close to that annoyance, right? It, it seems actually probably like the most competitive combo we've been looking at so far. So basically, right, again, we're trying to maximize real in, so we're stacking for traps, three of a kind is our big draw engine, combo that with like Codex of Blood Rot, some equipment maybe, right, we can put in Honing Hood, and that way we can continue to play cards even after we start the draw engine. So Juice Secrets is a fantastic card, right? We're not actually gonna use it to look at our opponent's hand. We wanna use it again to scout the top card of our deck. It's all about trying to make sure you know when to play real in. Again, if you can guarantee one card at least, then at least that's you know somewhat even, depending on how much you pitch. You could pitch zero just to guarantee that it's a draw one. Or again, you can go for the four. The shuffle is a little annoying, right? Because it undoes all your scouting. But then we have like cash in and crown dominion. Another viable choice though is mask of malicious manifestation. And what I would do with this is I would simply put in a singular attack, right? That's all you need, one singular attack. And then you have mask manifestation on board. All you need to find is a art of war. And all of a sudden you have another draw engine, right? Because mask manifestation will always find you the card. You get to float one resource and then you get to technically draw neutral, right? Cause you've potentially pitched one card. You've banished one card. You've drawn two, if you're floating resources, neutral, if it's not, it's a, it's a minus one. So I don't, well, isn't that fantastic? But I thought that was a fun enough interaction to point out, right? Again, just only having one attack, you can find one specific attack in this setting. I mean, last ditch effort comes to mind as well, but the point where you want to play last ditch effort, it's done. Burns of the past. Now this is the interesting one. So until the end of the turn, target hero can't play defense reaction cards with the same name as cards in their graveyard. Now on base, every time I've looked at it, it's gone like, oh, this is, this is a horrible card, right? Yeah, what, what about in this setting where we target ourselves? Because then we look at the second clause and it's, there are 10 or more defense reaction cards in their graveyard, draw a card. Hmm, okay. Well, we don't really have to worry about playing defense reactions if it's our turn. So this just being a zero cycle is fantastic, right? Riptide has access to not only two, you've got Stew Secrets, all you have to do is win your arsenal. That's four cycle cards and Gorgarian Time. You can cut off five cards from your deck or seven from class constructed, which is huge again in, in increasing the accuracy of you know draw engines or, or comboing out. Now again, pushing damage comes the rough point because we're really depending on making sure the traps land and actually do their effect. The the main gist of the deck is to always have enough cards in your hand excessively so that you can cherry pick what traps to use so that you can maximize A their effects and B also the burn damage from Riptide. Now 20 seems a lot more achievable in this setting, and I think it would probably shut down most aggro decks. In class constructed, 40 damage on average of burn, and then like the blood rod effects isn't super exciting. So you'd probably then chuck in 
maybe Talisharian Seal the Ornate Tenson, Last Ditch Efforts, something to help push damage. But yeah, I think I think we're at the points where there are definitely enough traps to make this work. And Real In is it's definitely a godsend. Now, I don't think this is the the intended scenario, right? Well, not, sorry, say for fish, this is to you. Because you are the one who told me to check out Real In. I don't think this is what you necessarily intended. But yeah, trap only Riptide completely. All it takes is some out of the ordinary gear. Again, uh, the reason I'm using Deep Blue, one, turns any card into a blue, which is fantastic for what we're going for. We really have to maximize your resources. But again, it puts the trap to the bottom of your deck and we are just drawing excessively, right? Imagine the first few turns. You just have four traps in here. You just play all four traps. You're playing completely defensively and then you clock into the draw engine, right? At that point, Deep Blue really comes in handy because you should be able to, again, stack up your hand with just a ton and let that be your next few turns, right? You don't have to worry about restocking your hand, drawing, thinning out your deck. You've got a whole plethora of traps, again, to cherry pick the effects you want to use. Now, there's probably more traps than you need, right, to make this a balanced deck. So if we put them all in, for instance, it's it's already excessive amounts, right? We've got, I don't think that many slots left. Yeah, 34. Chuck in like this round's on me because it could be neutral draw. Chuck in strategic planning because it's also could be neutral draw, right? You just draw it at the end of your, your phase. Uh, Burns of the Past, again, seems really good in this style of deck. And then one attack maybe with the Art of War combo. But we're already at 38, right? And then just having something to, to clench some sort of last attack. Again, last Jeff, it comes to mind. Yeah, seems fun enough. It seems fun enough that I might actually play this one and see how it performs, right? Again, just playing completely reactively and then having that big turn where you draw, but instead of, you know, the normal arrow payoff of Ranger, it's just more traps. And all you're doing is, is trapping. Yeah, could be interesting, right? Again, if you get the perfect trap alignment, you could burn, you know, say 13 damage, plus then the blood rots and the pitfall traps, right? You could, you could do a sizable amount of, of un resistible damage right to the point where they'd have to take prevent effects and then even then you know, could you take the braces right the van braces they have it's split effects is it not no no it's not so it's once per it's when you have an attack yeah so don't worry about them but yeah so ornate tension again just cycle a card right again draw engine or a better trap braces simply for scouting i can't think of a, a better better arm slot in this style of, of the deck other than just say strictly armor Crown of Dominion, I do kind of like the cash in. You don't necessarily need it. You can sort of go positive, right? It'll be pitch eight for four draw. So you'd use two cards, you'd pitch three cards. No, so it wouldn't be quite neutral. You'd have to pair it with other draw engines to, to get some benefit out of it. So I guess the gold is, is good. Otherwise, Hope Merchant Sword, Honing Hood to put a card in the arsenal once you start the three of a kind drawing or Mask of, of Malicious Manifestation with Art of War to specifically look for one attack so that you can then proc Art of War. But yeah, there's no other real benefit to it. Hmm. Uh, it's, it's Assassin's Creed. I was thinking like a cool draw engine for Wizard. But anyway, yeah. So Trap Riptide. Basically just all your traps. You know, let me, let me see if I can get a decent amount of draw, more so than I guess nine. Okay, so I decided to go with a full deck just to see how it plays. First turn, we just basically play traps. It's fine. Right now we have some of the draw engines. So what we can do is cash in first off the gold, right? Three of a kind is still the last thing we want to do because it shuts down. You have to always then be able to play from the arsenal. We do cash in, we play with the gold. I'm also thinking maybe cash out because then you could turn the crown and braces into two silver, which then pays for the other cash in. Could potentially work. Don't have to put anything to the arsenal just yet. So yeah, this round's on me. Codex, three of a kind. So I think we want to deep blue the pendulum trap. Yeah, deep blue the pendulum trap. And play this round's on me with the resources. Uh, still don't put anything to the arsenal. Inertia trap. Probably cycle it. Get to do secret, so that's good. So then we can do codex. Puts two secrets in to the arsenal. And then that allows us to place two secrets for its draw effect. It also allows us to look at the top card of our deck. It's another three of a kind, which is a little bit bad because if we could get to it, we could then do three of a kind into three of a kind. But again, in a proper competitive setting, you're probably not going for maximum traps, right? 
we're just going for enough traps to have a fun effect, right? To shut down our opponents. So even that, just having four traps to play, three of a kind to start off next turn. Well, actually, and maybe even another trap. Well, we got reel in. So reel in then lets you reel in, right? And maybe we get four more traps. So I guess you start with that. Yeah, pitch three. I'm trying to think if I ever want to pitch more than three. No, no, you just pitch three. Again, as long as you get two traps, you're happy. And we get three, so we're happy, right? So then we have, again, plethora of choice. We can use three of a kind on our next turn to refuel instead of, again, just passing. So that could work, but we are just strictly reactive. So having only four traps in hand versus a big trap turn like this doesn't really matter. The main thing, again, is having enough to shut down your opponent and then go into more draw. So we will also eventually hit the 10 traps in activating burns of the past, which is really good. Because uh, it's just the bot, we might as well just play every single trap. So we do want to space them out because we do have traps from the arsenal. Again, put Pitfall in, play Pitfall, play Buzzsaw, put Tripwire, doesn't really matter, right? And then that's our turn. Then we have Rockside Trap to Pigeon to three of a kind. Although we could also then arsenal three of a kind, but I think you want to get rid of it at this point. Yet three, kind of want to get rid of the Golgarian turn, so that's a little bit bad, but we can stick that in the arsenal for next turn. Actually, don't do that, because then that shuts down any trap that requires the arsenal. We have three to play, so it doesn't really matter. Just play whatever's necessary. And then our next turn is a little bit of draw. Not a fantastic amount. We actually have to draw into something to put two secrets into the arsenal, which we did. Get rid of the target, because it floats resources. To do secrets. Burns of the past should definitely be active now, right? One, two, three. Yeah, I'm gonna say that's definitely 10. So again, it's just a zero cycle, which makes it really strong. Don't don't play from hand first, play from the arsenal. In case we have anything we want to put in the arsenal. Hmm. Bad Talishir. Bad. So obviously it's auto-picked your opponent. The wording on that is until the end of turn, target hero. So it's open, it's not your opponent. So you, yeah, in proper play, you could definitely pick yourself. It's fine. Yeah, and that's just the general gist of the check. Oh, deck. Yeah, tongue tied. Right, a bit rough around the edges, but yeah, I think I think there's a solid enough draw engine. I mean, oh God, if the main the main spender would be, is there an X? I know there's the is it Judge Jury Executioner has an X effect, doesn't it? Or maybe I'm I'm misthinking that. Let me check. I don't think there is any specific X arrow for Riptide. Otherwise, the big payoff would be trying to just draw a bunch of traps and then pitch into an X-Cost. Again, they'll cycle back around and you try and just finish off your opponent with the burn damage instead. But I think it was Azalea. And I can't, well, it might not even be X. Yeah, no, it's a one cost. I don't know why I was thinking it was an X. So I don't think there is any. I don't even know if this works to search for X. Yeah, I'll pull up anything that has X in the title. So at least hit the cost slot. Uh, I'm trying to think what's a card with X. Sort of, but then that has X in the name, so I don't really know. If you know of a good X spender, I mean, I suppose like Fire Breather could work as well. Have a whole bunch of traps into just a massive Fire Breather. Out of curiosity, how much damage would that be? Hmm, maybe that's the combo we're going for. Yeah, the mind, the mind is cycling. So we could do the combo I was thinking. Mask of Malicious Manifestation to specifically find one attack, Fire Breather and then just burn with Fire Breather. This is, this is what I really want for Melody, a way to just pull out Final Act. The question is how many resources could we potentially get up to? God, now I need to put this at the start of the video, right? So that you're all interested. Uh, maybe a snippet. Exude Confidence is the other one, but I think the ratio is less. Yeah, it's three for two instead of, instead of one. But then you have the added benefit of it being a zero cost. And then also uh, you can't, what is it? Isn't defended by card with equal or greater power attack. The defending hero can't play or activate instance or defense reactions to combat chain, which is actually kind of good, right? It's just, it's a waste of resources. We'll try it with Fire Breather. I'll thin out the deck so we draw properly and then see how much we can pinch it to, right? All we need is one blue so that we have one for the mask ma malicious manifestation and then be able to play Fire Breather. But then three of a kind does sort of ruin it because we'd need to get Fire Breather 
into the arsenal. But if it's the only attack in the deck, then we can find it whenever we want. We can find it straight away, right? If we have a, f a feeling we're going to be able to draw, then it's fine. Although I do want to note, funny enough, I did name the deck Burn Tide. My thinking was burn through Riptide's effect, not burn through Fire Breather. Coincidence, maybe? Yeah, so I've stripped it down. Question is, what is the correct play? I think it's still deep blue. Go to the yellow. Right, and then we do reel in the three. We look for as many traps as possible, but now we have the ornate Tencent. We don't want to put anything to the arsenal. So we get two traps, which is fine. The next guy is five breather, so it's not that great. We get our two traps. We don't want to put a card in our arsenal just yet. We can then mask. Right, that will draw five breather. So we get rid of... It doesn't really matter. They're all blue. Right. We sync another one. This is where it kind of hurts. Because it's pay one and sync. We have two floating, which is fine. We know the next card is I, so I could do this to cycle that into I. But I don't need to because we're just playing three of kind anyway. And we're just looking for pitchables. We do that. That allows us to put Fire Breather into the arsenal. We get four cards in hand. We can then attack with Fire Breather. We do unfortunately have to pitch one more. All right, it's a three. It's in a four. And then we can make it a, what, seven, ten, a twelve. That's that's not a horrible opener, but as your one-time payoff, it's a little it's a little lackluster. I suppose the go would be blend the two versions of the deck that we just played. So have it be heavily trapped offensive, and then the payoff, or have the you know burn with fire breather, and then eventually play traps just to try and do that little bit last bit of damage. But then this does leave you open. Hmm, it's an interesting idea. Not as much damage as I would hope, right? Again, if we got a huge draw, so you start to sink one card because of the mask. So maybe you still don't take the mask, you're just hoping to find Fire Breather, but then that seems atrocious. I definitely like the mask to find one specific attack, in this case Fire Breather. You could still run two copies as well. Yeah, especially on your first turn opener, right? Because then you get to refill your hand regardless. Hmm, it's interesting. A little bit of fine tuning and tweaking. And we we probably have something. But yeah, trap tide. Trap tide burn tide. Hopefully, hopefully you find it interesting. Well, I think we'll leave it there, right? I'll play around with it a little bit, but hope you enjoyed. See ya.